Hey everyone, my name is Brent Colby. And I'm Stephen Salmon. Just like the fish. Welcome to the Fusion Ministry Podcast. And that's Ashley Best right behind us. <laughs> Ashley, how's it going? Wow, you that's the music part. Really believe that out of her, but don't worry. Today's episode is not sponsored by... I'm really excited. It's not sponsored by the Shopkins Birthday Party Pack. Now, most of you are saying, Shopkins Birthday Party Pack, what is that? But if you have a seven-year-old daughter in your house and are as cool as me, you know exactly what the Shopkins Birthday Party Pack is. Steven, give the folks a taste of what this is all about. Uh, you've got a mouse. Okay. You've got some plates. <laughs> you know my daughter's gonna watch that, this. And <laughs> uh, have donuts on them. Yep. And popcorn. Yep. And a cupcake. Yep. And ooh, little. Oh, these are candles. Yeah. Oh, these candles have little holders on the bottom so the wax doesn't get into your cake. Bird. Has it really taken till 2017 yeah. for someone to come up? What have we been doing? We're recording podcasts instead of coming up with great inventions. Shopkins Birthday Party Pack does not mess around, Stephen. I think you know, or at least you know now. Well, thanks for nothing, Shopkins. Hey, I have something awesome other than this beanie that I'm tired of wearing, so I'm going <laughs> to... I did my best. Okay. Um, I mean, not everyone can Now, Stephen, do you own a cell phone? I do. Have you owned a cell phone for a while? Uh, yes. Have you owned a cell phone long enough to have at one point in your life owned a Nokia Okay, hold on. Is this an age joke? What's well, going on? Well, it could be. Okay. But the Nokia 3310, famous for many things, its indestructibility, its long battery life, but probably most famous for its introduction to the broader world, the game of Snake. Have you played this game before? I've played Snake. Okay. I don't know any of the Nokia like numbers associated with the phones, but I think I know which one you're talking about. Let me show you what we got here. Okay. Check it out for yourself. This is the Nokia 3310. I think you'll recognize it right off the bat. Bat, bat, right off the bat. <laughs> Nokia yeah, here it is. Possibly the hottest smartphone to come out of MWC 2017. So there it is. Do you recognize this phone? Does this look yeah, familiar to yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, it looks a little revamped. A yes. little bit. Yeah. Um, this is the phone that I was able to text people just by feel in my pocket during whoa. Spanish class in high school. That's good. Yeah. The old T9. Yeah. That's intense. Yeah, I was quick. You know, and it's these sort of things that, you know, the next generation of kids is really going to miss out on. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're talking about some crazy phones right now, so. That's true. So anyways, I thought that was awesome to see a comeback of the dumb Very phone. Awesome. Uh, I think, here's my prediction. Okay. Uh, maybe give it 10 years. The, there's going to be a generation of kids, maybe the, the kids in our elementary age programs today. Okay. They're going to grow up and they're going to push back on technology as it exists today. It's going to be a counterculture away from our current tech trends and they're going to want things like this dumb phone and other more like single purpose use devices and things like no that. No more big brother. I think so. I think uh, I think that's on the horizon someday. Cool. Yeah. All right. What are we talking about today? Today we're talking about branding your children's ministries and we're asking this very simple question. How do you create a brand around your ministry? Oh. Now, Church on the Ridge, uh, you guys have done a great job branding your church and, and your ministries, and so yes. I thought I would ask you. I am Church on the Ridge. <clears throat> the entire I represent, no, 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 no. They, 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 uh, church on the Ridge has done a really good job, but yeah. there are some really smart people who have put a lot of time into that. I can, I can talk a little bit about it. Just, yeah. uh, well, you've at least had a hand in branding your children's ministries. Yeah. So how do you do like a brand within a brand? And like, what's some questions you guys well, ask get I started? Think, yeah, I think what, uh, the first place we started was what do we want this to be? Like where, where, where do we fit into the church and how do we want this to um, go about? Because one, one thing that's always interesting is, you know, we, we always call things like kids church, right? Yeah. And that is good, but also I think sets you up for thinking, oh, or if people hear that, it's like a separate entity almost than right. the church. And right. so, you know, you really have to say, okay, how can we as a ministry actually complement the ministry of the entire church really well and then build our brand around that? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Do you believe in creating your own like separate ministry identity? I mean, like you just kind of mentioned building a brand around the church's brand. How do you, how do, you do that? Do you just you, church name? Kids or? Well, I mean, our, ours is called 
Kids on the Ridge, and the church okay. is called Church on the Ridge. So okay. right there in branding wise, we try to keep it pretty pretty uniform. Yep, and, I get that. You know, so but um, I, you know, I'm not I'm not sure. I mean, we kind of go about it from that way. Kids on the Ridge, and thought that was it used to be called Take Two. So when okay. we came, we changed it to Kids on the Ridge, and um, that's it, that. Uh, some people were like, Oh, we loved it when it was called Take Two. Everything was called something different. The preschool was called something different. Uh, everything was different. The preschool on the Ridge. It's all, you know, so I don't know. I, keeping it, the brand, the same, I think really helps. It lets people know exactly who you are and what you're about rather than, oh, take two, oh, kids town, oh, whatever, you know, it's all yeah. different. So talk to me about like visual, how you visually brand your ministry. Is that important to have a logo? You mentioned the name, but do you guys have a graphics or color scheme? Yeah, we do. We have one that we um, worked actually really hard on and then, um, and built the one you didn't work hard on? <laughs> well, you know, I, we want it to be really fun and we want it to look like something that kids would enjoy and, and have um, uh, a good time seeing and then being on a bunch of stuff that, so that it would be, I don't know, more, more kidsy, but also, I guess, not corporate, but... Like professional, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. a good word, professional. Yeah, I think, I don't know how many, like, logos I've designed for camps and shirts sure. and I'm not particularly good at it, but I just always felt compelled to create okay. a thing. We, Brent, you don't have to be humble. We well, know that I mean, you're you're very you're very talented. Yeah. I did um, have you seen my daughter's book, But Bup Goes to the Zoo? No. I'm just saying it runs in the family. She at four years old she uh, uh, authored a book about Bup Bup who goes to the zoo. It's awesome. And uh, she's, uh, you can find it on Amazon or your local digital retailers. Perfect. Worldwide. All right. <laughs> in fact, so she seriously drew this, we made a little Kindle book out of it. And I have some other Kindle books that I have out there in the wild. And there will be many months where she sells more copies of her sure. four page book drawn on the iPad than yeah. I've made of my like well thought out research wow. book. Hmm. Crazy. Yeah. So anyways, nice. but I always feel compelled to like create a brand, a logo, a thing for everything. And sometimes I, even for like our events, you get so excited about creating like an environment, a, an event theme, where each year you wanna recreate the event, recreate the event, recreate the event. Yeah. But what we've been realizing that sometimes it's more valuable just to double, to create one consistent theme and double down on that theme. Sure. I think last episode you talked about uh, the Nerf Wars that you guys have yeah. at church. Yeah, yeah. Um, I imagine you could have like a Nerf, a sub theme each year for Nerf Wars or just have one Nerf War brand. Nerf War, and we use the same logo every single year. So to try to keep it very, very much the same and I did not create the logo. I mean, you're you're talented, you can do that, but I I think as children's pastors, sometimes we get so focused on the programming and the different stuff and volunteers, we don't really know a lot about branding and, and, and stuff. And so yeah. really, this is really, you have to leverage people in your church or if you're, um, your church has a marketer or someone on the team, that is fantastic. Yeah. Really go to them and utilize them and say, hey, Maybe you've never talked to them before in that sense of how can we brand this and use this to really get out to the people and keep it in a way that's gonna make sense. Yeah, here's, here's what I'm taking away. Keep your marketing, your branding, your look in alignment with your church. Yeah. Keep it simple, don't have to have a new theme for everything all the time. Yeah. And lean into the gifts that people have in your, yes. in your ministry. Yeah. I have a pro tip for you. Pro tip. Do we have a pro tip sound effect? Can we, what would it sound like? Would it be like reggae or like metal or like a, what sort of music? I listen genre? to the trumpet of Jesus. Great. Can you give us a trumpet of Jesus pro tip? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. That's a high, that's a high bar. Great. Can we hit a, a do, 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 do. okay, perfect. Uh, pro tip for me is we often use um, a resource called Graphic River. Oh. It's just a place where you can um, download logos and stuff that are already done. Now, it's not free. You are paying for something, right. mm -hmm. but what you're paying for is a professionally designed graphic or sure. icon or logo. And I'll tell you, just having one really nice piece, if it's just your F for fusion or your, you know, the N for the Nerf War, whatever difference. it is, makes a huge difference. Because then you can use that in so many different contexts. So there's been so many times where we have, um, even if I look up Nerf in, in Graphic yeah. River here, even sometimes we've just had just one piece and you know we pay 20 bucks for it, but you think of the time you save of getting something done professionally. We live help. in the age now where everything is done so professionally. You know, people have access to so many tools today, Photoshop and different things that where people really can create professional things for a lot 
cheaper and, and have better access to it than ever before. So there's really not an excuse to put forward things that may be kind of janky. Yeah, yeah. You don't got to be a brilliant designer, but you do have to cross that no. competency threshold yeah. to look legit. Definitely. So, awesome. Those are great thoughts, um, Stephen. But before I do let you go, I would like to play a little game with you okay. today. I like to call what came first, the book or the film? Oh, boy. We established last week you are a bit of a film. What do film nerds call themselves? Film junkie? I don't know. No. Film nerds? No. No. Not we're a not, junkie? No, we're no. No. Screen junkies, film junkies. If you're a YouTube channel, we are not taking any of your <laughs> subscribers. Nothing like so that. So what do you call a fil film buff? That's what you call a film buff. A film connoisseur? Film buff. Yeah. Film you're buff. a film buff. Sure. I've seen a few films. I'm kind of a book nerd. So book I think nerd. this mm. is my quiz for you. What came first, the book Can or the film? Can I ask Ashley for any lifelines? Yes. You get one lifeline okay. from Ashley. Okay. Number one. Okay. The movie. Which came first, this or the book? And the movie is Blade Runner. Oh my god. Blade gosh. Runner. Which came first? I know first? there's a new movie coming out with Ryan Gosling in it. Okay. I what mean, do you say? Film first, book first? Uh, film first, Harrison Ford. Film first is incorrect. It was wow. book first. And Pro Trivia Trip, the book was titled Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? I've never seen the film. Oh, I'm excited for the Ryan Gosling film. Hold on, you're film, a though. film buff, but you haven't seen Blade Runner? Hey, I grew up in a very Christian household. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure that one is rated R. All right, so. Okay, whatever. Thank uh, you. Number two, Mrs. Doubtfire. Book first or movie first? Mrs. Doubtfire. Movie. Movie. <clears throat> the correct answer is book. Okay, it's book every time. It's book, and it was Madame Doubtfire, which Madam. is probably why you got confused. Probably. Because I'm sure you read the Robin title. Robin Williams, by... though. Number three, Underworld. Un is Underworld. that the vampire movie? I've never seen it, starring Kate Beckinsdale. The film came first, or the book came first? No, film. Film came first. The answer is correct. Yeah. The film was later turned into a book, yeah. using the same name. Okay, number four, so you're one for three so far. Okay. Mr. Magnorium's Wonder Emporium. Oh. Very famous movie starring Dustin Hoffman, Natalie Portman. I'm sure you've seen it many times. Book. Book and the correct answer is film. No, I'm sorry. You're incorrect again. You're not doing so good. You've got two right so far. Here you go. Next Whatever. one. Ultraviolet. <laughs> Ultraviolet. A movie. I hope it was a movie first. <laughs> And they the didn't answer is yes, it was a film first. Okay. Ultraviolet. Jaws. Famous Steven book. Spielberg flick Jaws. You say it was a book first. The correct answer is yes. Jaws was first a book. Yes. A Million Ways to Die in the West. A movie I'm sure you never saw, um, but book. it is a movie. You're saying it was a book. And the correct answer is nope, it was a film first. Really? Yeah. It was a movie. Not many westerns were films before they were books. No movie list would be correct without a Nicolas Cage hey, film. Hey, Nicolas Cage. That's, the, he's our friend. The Wicker Man. The Wicker Man. When book. was this movie made? Uh, it was made based on the movie poster I'm looking at here sometime between 1979 and 2008. <laughs> I'm trying to see if it was pre or post National Treasure Nicolas Cage. Oh, I'm going. Uh, I'm sticking with my uh, time frame. The Wicker Man book. Book. And it is... It was a film. It was a film, Merce. In fact, it was made... The Wicker Man was a remake of a Wicker Man. Oh, so, okay. Which was never a book. Okay. So that's gotcha. double down. Okay, gotcha. last but not least. All right. Tom Hanks in Forrest Gump. Was this I've first seen a movie? never seen that movie. You've never seen Blade Runner or Forrest Gump, and you're calling yourself a film buff? Hey, I've seen Waterworld lots of times. It's awesome. He and has gills behind his ears, guys. It's so good. He can dive down and get all the sand. He's like, hey, you want dirt? I can't do anymore. That's all we have for this week. Please, if you have any movie recommendations. It's so good. Have you seen Citizen Kane? What? Have what you even seen, is that? Have you seen? Okay. Casablanca? Never yeah. seen it. Really? Gone with the Wind? Never seen it. What's What's your favorite movie? One Flew Over the Cuckoo Nest? Never seen it. Okay. See, I can name all these movies. Never yeah. seen them. Okay. Wow. Well, what's my favorite movie? Muppet Treasure Island. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Brent Colby. And I'm Steven Salem, just like the fish. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.